Are you planning a cruise that docks in Port Canaveral for the day? Are you looking at shore excursions that will whisk you away to Universal Studios or the Disney parks? Are you wondering if it's worth it and how much time you spend on the bus, how much time you get in the parks, and what it costs? I have done both of these excursions myself. Today I'm going to walk you through my trip to the Disney parks on a port excursion. I will tell you what I paid, how the day unfolded, where we spent our time, and what I thought. Hopefully this will help you make a decision about your port excursion for your cruise. So let's get started. First things first, it may be helpful to you to understand how far away Orlando is from Port Canaveral. Disney World, SeaWorld, and Universal Studios, they're all around 60 to 70 miles away from Port Canaveral. On a good day with no traffic, that's about 65 minutes worth of driving. Having said that, you can never count on what the traffic will be when you go. Certainly, if you go in the middle of summer or spring break or maybe a festival weekend with a lot happening in the area, you could take as long as two hours to get there and as long as two hours to get back. Now, let me begin by saying I took this excursion while sailing with Royal Caribbean and we did not dock until about noon. And this is one of the reasons you end up with limited amount of time in the park because you can't get an early start be there when the park opened. My excursion day began at one o'clock. We were told where to meet and we were escorted to the shuttle and we boarded the shuttle at one o'clock. We went on a Sunday and traffic was minimal. We were there in about 90 minutes. When we arrived at Disney, we went to a special area where shuttles drop off passengers. We were given a very strict time to be back on the bus by the bus driver. It was not a time to start heading back to the bus. It was a time to be on the bus with the doors closing. Now this is critical because they have to get back to the ship before it's time for the ship to leave. So my first tip for you, if you decide to do this excursion, note what time you're supposed to be back on the bus. Allow yourself more time than you think you need to get back to the bus and make sure you're on it because believe me, at the end of the day, our bus pulled away on time and no one checked to make sure everybody was on board. There was no call sheet, there was no name checking. We just left. If you were late for the bus, you were gonna get left behind. It was not a long walk from the bus drop-off area to the gate, but be aware it is a little bit of a walk and depending on the day and the crowd, you may have to wait in line to get into the park. Something you need to know about this excursion is that tickets to the park are not included. This excursion is transportation only and you are paying for transportation only. You will need to go online ahead of your cruise and buy your tickets to the park. This is very important. Do not book this cruise and plan to just buy your tickets at the gate when you get there. There is a chance that could work out just fine. There is also a very strong possibility you will get there and be denied entry because the park is sold out for the day. This past year, Disney World had a reservation system where you had to buy your ticket ahead of time and make a reservation for your chosen park ahead of time, and the parks did sell out. They have since done away with that system, but it could come back anytime. So the two things you need to know right away, you have to buy your tickets yourself and you want to check and make sure that park reservations are still not required. So let me walk you through our day and then I'm going to go back and give you some specific advice for you to take or leave regarding this whole day in general. When we were dropped off at the Magic Kingdom and we were given our time to return to the bus, it worked out that we had exactly four hours to spend in the park. Being that this is the Magic Kingdom, of course, it was very, very crowded. But I had a plan for the day. I ran around the park in my four hours and I did everything that I had planned to do. I understood from past visits to the park what was reasonable to expect from a four hour visit. And here is my second bit of advice for you. If this is your very first time to Disney, I would consider not doing this excursion because Disney is an amazing place. It's a wonderful place. It's a very crowded place. Everything you want to do from rides to buying food to using the restroom will involve waiting in a long line. It can be very frustrating to have your very first visit to Disney World be so short. You won't be able to get a lot done. 
I was traveling solo on this trip, so I was able to run around the park and do the things that were most important to me. I was able to get two or three rides in. Mostly, I just wanted to make a few laps around the park, take it all in, hear the music, see the castle, grab a Dole Whip and a Mickey pretzel, and just enjoy the sliver of time I had there to the max. And I did get to do that, and there was time to buy a couple of souvenirs on my way out. As I said before, allow yourself a little extra time, more than you think you need, to get back to your bus. I boarded the bus about 10 to 15 minutes ahead of schedule, and everybody piled onto the bus. And when 6.30 came, they closed the bus doors and they took off. Now, as I said, they had no way of knowing if they had left someone behind. I guess they might have done a head count, but I don't think they did. I think they just closed the door at 6.30 and off we went. So if you were someone who arrived two minutes late, you were going to be out of luck and you were going to be calling an Uber and hoping you could make it back to the ship before they left without you. It took us about two hours to return to the ship. We got back to the ship, got on board, and we sailed away about 30 minutes later. So it was a close day as far as getting off the ship the minute we could, going straight to Disney World, having our four hours, and then allowing two hours to get back in case of traffic, which we did have, and getting back on the ship just in time to sail away. Now that I've walked you through my day, let me recap what it costs, and then I'm going to give you some tips and advice for you to take into consideration while you plan whether or not this is a good port excursion for you. As far as cost, the shuttle to and from the park cost $70. My ticket to the park cost $145. And of course, there were extras that were totally optional, such as buying souvenirs, buying food, tipping the bus driver and the bus guide. As you consider this port excursion for yourself, you're going to want to keep those prices in mind. Keep in mind that I paid $145 for a full day ticket to get into the park. And of course, I was only able to use four hours worth of it. Which brings me to my final range of advice. Who is this a good excursion for? And who is better off to possibly skip this one? As I mentioned earlier, I don't believe this is the ideal excursion for someone who's never been to Disney before. For one thing, you're going to arrive at the park, see how amazing it is, and be very frustrated to only have four hours. Also, because of the crowds, you won't get to ride very many rides in that four hours. And if this is your first time at the park, you won't really know your way around. You will have to spend some amount of time just navigating the park, reading maps, and figuring out where to go and what to see and what to prioritize. I also feel, and this is entirely my own personal opinion, that this is not an ideal excursion for people with very young children. If you have to go rent a stroller when you get there and then return the stroller and try to navigate the stroller through all of those crowds, that's just going to eat up that much more time out of your little four hours. It's a lot to ask of a small child to take a four hour round trip bus ride as well. And it just may not be the best family quality time you're looking for on your cruise vacation. I would also reconsider this tour if you're someone who's going to be very bothered by paying well over $100 to get into the park and only being able to use the park for four hours. You may want to reconsider this tour if it's the middle of summer. If it's the middle of August, it's going to be unbearably hot and humid out there, and it may rain during your four-hour window. If you're someone bothered by the heat, this might not be ideal if you're traveling in the summer. If you really can't stand crowds, Disney's crowded all the time. You're going to want to especially reconsider if you're traveling right at Thanksgiving, right at Christmas, right in the middle of spring break. And that brings us to, well, who do I think the excursion is for exactly? First of all, I think it's for Disney fans everywhere. Disney fans that are so excited to get to the park, they don't mind the long bus ride, the short visit, and the expense. Even if it's your first time, even if you have small kids, and even if it's hot and crowded, if you're dying to go, then go. If it's out of the question to return to the park on your own and spend more time, if it's really literally your one time in Orlando this whole year or for years to come, and you really, really want to see Disney World, then go. 
Make the most of it, enjoy it, know what you're getting into, and enjoy. I also think this is an ideal excursion for people experienced at the Disney parks who know exactly how to get around, where their favorite rides are located, where all the restrooms are, where the shortest lines are, where the best snacks are. If you're well familiarized with the parks and you can zip in and maximize your four hours, then you're ahead of the game. If it sounds great to you, go to the parks, enjoy. If you have decided that yes, you are definitely taking this port excursion, I do want to leave you with just a few suggestions and tips to make your day better. First of all, as I have mentioned, make sure you buy your tickets to the park ahead of time. Do not count on being able to show up at the park and buy your tickets there. Secondly, have a plan. If you're traveling with anybody else, make sure your group discusses what you want to do with your four hours well before you arrive at the park. Take into consideration the people that just want to walk around and look and the people that want to ride rides. Prioritize your top three ride choices. Have some flexibility built in in case you need to change plans due to long lines or rain but definitely have a plan A and a plan B so that you go into the park with some idea of how you're going to spend your time. Another thing to do is pack wisely. Bring a backpack, put a couple of bottles of water in there to save yourself a little bit of money. You may need sunscreen. You will most likely need a hat, sunglasses. If it's cold or raining, you're going to want to allow for that. Bring a rain poncho, an umbrella, an extra sweater, things like that. Make sure you wear great shoes. Even though you're only in the park a short time, you will be walking and walking and walking. This is not the day to break in new sneakers or wear flip-flops. Lastly, one of the best things you can do to maximize your day at the park is to download the My Disney Experience app well ahead of time. You're going to want to put your tickets in here digitally so you can just show your app when you get to the gate. You can use your app to mobile order food and have it waiting for you when you arrive. You can use your phone for mobile checkout in the store so you can skip the line at the register. But most importantly, you can use your app to check the wait times for the rides. You can do this on the bus on the way to the park. You can check your top three rides and see what the lines look like. If you discover that they're 180 minutes long and it's just out of the question, you can look at all the other rides and decide what you're going to do instead. Having the My Disney Experience app will definitely streamline your experience and make things a lot easier. Familiarize yourself with the app before you head to the parks and you'll be in great shape. Also, you may want to take a phone battery backup. Take along some sort of charger. Don't forget the cord you need to attach it to your phone. Even though you're in the park a short time, overall, it's a long day between the bus ride and the park. You may be using your phone a lot to take video, pictures. If you have a group that divides, you may be texting each other quite a bit. You don't want your battery to die right in the middle of the park. So pack that battery back up. And one final piece of advice. There are plenty of other ways to get to the parks other than a ship booked excursion. There are many, many independent shuttles that will meet you at port and take you back and forth to the park. You can also hire an Uber. You can also go rent a car. Here's my advice on using anything other than a ship booked excursion. Personally, I don't recommend it. As I mentioned, you never know what the traffic will be doing. The parks are quite far away from the port. If you leave the park and find yourself in your own little private rental car stuck in a huge traffic jam that doesn't move for an hour, you're going to be in big trouble because the cruise ship will leave without you. The good thing about a ship-sponsored excursion is that they know you're on the excursion. They know you're coming back. If you get stuck in a nightmare traffic jam, if something happens like a flat tire, the ship is going to wait for all of you. Take that peace of mind with you when you go to the park. Personally, I would not want to spend my precious four hours at Disney World worrying that maybe we should leave a little earlier than planned because we might not make it back to the ship on time. Taking the ship-sponsored excursion does buy you peace of mind. Have you been on this port excursion yourself? Did you find it was worth it? 
If you have a comment to share here or a tip for your fellow traveler, please feel free to leave it here. I hope this video has been helpful in helping you decide whether or not this port excursion is right for you. Many people will tell you it is a waste of time to go to the park for only four hours, but you're the only one who can decide if this is something you really, really want to do anyway. If you're up for the day and all it involves and the long bus ride and the expensive ticket, I say go. Go to the park, enjoy yourself. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing and please hit the like button. Thank you so much and enjoy your next cruise. Bye-bye.